there, I'm Ms. Sanders. I am an English 10 teacher here at Oxon Hill High School. I'm going to walk you through the information that I have in this slideshow. A few things about myself. Uh, this is the eighth year I've been teaching English at Oxon Hill High School. Before that, I taught English in Cochabamba, Bolivia for a year. So that's my earlier teaching experience. I'm currently teaching English 10 with honors and co-taught sections. And I'm a graduate from St. Olaf College, which is a liberal arts school in Northfield, Minnesota. Of course, description, I'm not going to read all of this to you, but as you can imagine, uh, English 10 involves a lot of essays, comprehension of text, fiction, nonfiction, and writing. So you can read uh, that on your own. And next is the curriculum overview. I'm going to focus on quarter one uh, because that is what we are in for a while yet. But quarter one, its instructional focus is nothing to fear. And all the articles and all the texts and the writing assignments in this quarter are focused on fear, what fear is, what its purpose is, what its drawbacks are, and ultimately they will have to write an essay arguing their position on what fear is, whether it's real or not real, whether it's justified or unjustified. So right now we're in arc one, Foundations of Writing. They've written a draft of an essay, which they will be going over and revising over time. And we are looking at articles that will be used to bolster their thesis with additional evidence. The interim assessment will occur after that arc is done. And then arc two, fear itself is additional information about fear additional readings and additional writings. The assessments this quarter include diagnostics, such as the one they just completed, um, formative assessments, which are done over the course of the quarter, interim assessment, which I just mentioned, and then culminating tasks, including the essay that they're currently writing and the benchmark. So attendance, you're probably getting the same spiel from every single other teacher, so I'm not going to belabor all these points, but obviously I take attendance every time I have a meeting with your student. Um, I enter attendance into Schoolmax, and it is updated within the first 20 minutes of the class. I double check with Zoom reports, so if your student comes in half an hour after the call has started, I should be able to see that, and certainly if the student misses class, they should email me and tell me why. Um, there is a TC code which can be entered into attendance to mark students who are absent because of technology problems. And I think that's important to note so that you know what that means. Students with excused absences should contact the administration as well as myself. And students who miss work for those reasons, those excused reasons, can make up work. Every week I will enter two grades and there will be a variety of opportunities. So each assignment is going to be a little different. It's going to be assessed a little differently, uh, but that will include classwork assessments and independent practice. This year, uh, if you are familiar with how previous years have dealt with English grade, it's a little different. Classwork used to be worth more. Now it's worth 35%. So that includes anything that is done during the Zoom call and during class time. So that could include class discussions. It could include written responses that I ask for during the class. It could include a presentation that they give or participation or text-based vocabulary. Anything they do during the Zoom call, it falls under the classwork category. Independent assignments is the category replacing homework. And the idea behind independent work is that that is completed during their independent time, which is the 25 minutes after class time. So those kinds of assignments are going to be usually readings for me. Maybe they have an article I want them to read so that they come back and do a uh, conversation or a discussion. So that's what that falls into. It could be journals, could be anything that's sort of homeworky and something that I would usually grade for completion, though not always. Assessment is now 
Last year, you might know it was 50%, but year, this year it's a bit lower. 40% of the grade are tests. Could be quizzes, could be writing assignments, could be culminating uh, presentations, things of that nature are going to fall under assessment. And those will be fairly regular so that uh, that grade can be spread across multiple assignments. So that was just a duplicate slide there. Materials and class needs. Just like all other classes, they'll need probably a notebook or something to keep track of their work. Um, I always recommend having something external so that if something goes wrong, they have it written down and they have some sort of planner. Some computer is going to be required. Uh, the reason a phone doesn't really work is first, the online textbook doesn't really function with a phone. And also once you're writing essays and longer compositions, phones get more cumbersome. So having a computer, whether it's the school Chromebook or a personal PC is really important. Online access will be required, just like all of your other courses. And email is a big place for communication. That's where students should email me. Student, yeah, you can email me as well. I email them. It's a two-way street. That's really important to stay in touch. So digital platforms. We are meeting on Zoom. Uh, and I have links to my Zoom calls publicly. Um, those Zoom calls are where most instruction takes place. I'll usually give lectures or we'll guide discussions and I'll tell them what to do with the assignment. But all the work itself that's completed for a grade will be done in Google Classroom. So sh should your student ever miss a class, if they log into Google Classroom, they'll see what I posted that day. They can add questions, verifying statements, and that will go there. These other apps that you see, like Google Forms, is obviously a part of Google Classroom. Clever will eventually be the portal through which they access their textbook. Things like Padlet, Flipgrid, No Red Ink are resources that we'll use during class to gather information or, or to test students on their knowledge during the class. Those are some of the platforms, obviously not all of them, but some of them. How am I supporting your scholar during virtual instruction? So via Google Classroom primarily, though email is a big function as well. Private comments or email, that's the best way to get to me. Um, if I don't get to you right away, it just means I have a lot of other emails backed up. So please feel free. If you send me an email, you don't get a response quick enough. It is perfectly legitimate to send me another one and say, hey, you didn't respond. I, I definitely see that and I'll try to keep on top of that. I do have conference signups for my Google Calendar. So I have a link to that in the next slide. And then Wednesdays. Wednesdays are our sale days. I have first period on Wednesday is my makeup session. If your student ever misses a class, they can go into that session and get makeup work and make up instruction and anything they missed. Third period on C day is English tutoring. If they have an essay to work on and they're struggling or if they have an assignment and they don't get it, they can stop by third period and get assistance. But other than that, I do a lot of things um, during the session to try to support learning. I try to pull in a lot of prior knowledge, frequent checks for understanding, discussion in live Zoom classes, warm-ups, exit tickets, and activities in between to see that they're awake. I use breakout rooms to elicit discussion, and I give chances to practice and ask questions, as well as live support. All right, and the last slide here is my office hours and contact information. My office hours are 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. on Mondays and Thursdays. You can set up an appointment there and then 1 to 2 p.m. on Fridays, um, unless otherwise stated, are going to be my office hours. My email is ashjenny.sanders at pgcps.org, and so that's how you'd contact me. But thank you so much for watching, and I hope that we have a great year.